অনারেবল চিফ গেস্ট প্রফেসর কনকান্তি বড়ুয়া স্যার ভাইস প্রিন্সিপাল ভাইস চ্যান্সেলর বঙ্গবন্ধু শেখ মুজিব মেডিকেল ইউনিভার্সিটি অনারেবল স্পেশাল গেস্ট প্রফেসি বঙ্গবন্ধু শেখ মুজিব মেডিকেল ইউনিভার্সিটি রিসার্চ অ্যান্ড ডেভেলপমেন্ট রেসপেক্টেড চেয়ারম্যান প্রফেসর সৈয়দ আলী হাসান স্যার চেয়ারম্যান অব দ্য ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ কার্ডিওলজি বিএসএমএমু রেসপেক্টেড প্যানেলিস্ট স্পিকার্স মাই কলিগস পার্টিসিপেন্টস অ্যান্ড ফ্রেন্ডস ladies and gentlemen i welcome you all to this seminar on cardiology organized jointly by the department of cardiology bangabandhu shek music medical university and bangladesh cardiovascular research foundation and technically supported by incept pharmaceuticals bangladesh limited today we have divided this session into two segments firstly an inaugural ceremony and secondly the most exciting part the scientific session in which uh, there will be two learned speakers now i will humbly request bc sir to inaugurate this auspicious event and say some words addressing us shurute onnora bolbe to amar mona shurute ekto amar mona ekta ekta dekhte hoyche shobol sir ke ekto den shubhechcha boktobo डिपार्टमेंट प्रफेसर सैयद अली हसान the uh, participant from uh, home and abroad uh, uh good afternoon uh, i welcome all of you to this webinar uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, and i hope that everybody will be benefited and enjoy the webinar uh, because we have uh, very two important uh, topics uh, today that will be presented by professor uh, choudhury mishkat ahmed and and uh, professor uh, sm mustafa jaman so i will not take more time uh, again i will say uh, congratulations and uh, good wishes to everyone who is present in this webinar thank you very much my heartfelt thanks to shazol sir now i am actually delighted to request professor Muhammad Jahid Hussain Provisi Research and Development Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Medical University to address us uh, as our special guest Jahid sir please uh, honorable chief guest of today's webinar uh, organized by Cardiovascular Foundation and Department of Cardiology Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Medical University uh, Professor Kono Kanti Borua Honorable Vice Chancellor of Bangladesh Sheikh Mujib Medical University, uh, Honorable Chairman of today's uh, webinar, Professor Sujit uh, Ali Hussain, Chairman of Department of Cardiology of Bangladesh Sheikh Mujib Medical University, uh, Professor Shahzul Kunjur of uh, Krishna Banerji, Dean Faculty of Medicine, and very senior cardiologist of Bangladesh, the senior Professor of Department of uh, Cardiology, and also. Uh, Professor Varun uh, was uh, joined this webinar from Nepal, and all the learned participants from home and abroad uh, express <clears throat> uh, my sincere thanks and gratitude to uh, Professor Sujit Ali Hassan and his team for organizing such a wonderful webinar on uh, cardiology topics. I think. all the participants uh, who are present uh, uh, to on uh, in this seminar will be benefited by this presentation uh, with these two words i hope that this seminar will be fruitful uh, and our our participants will be much more benefited with the, uh, with the presentation which will be made by professor uh, uh, mishka damed and professor mustafa jaman uh, with these few words i want to conclude for here Uh, thank you all i'm really thankful to professor mohammad jahid hussain 
the provinci research and development bangabandhu sheikh mujib medical university for his excellent and kind words for us now my uh, may i humbly request bc sir to inaugurate the auspicious event and to say something for us honorable chairman of that uh, uh, this webinar session on cardiology organized by department of cardiology and cardiovascular foundation of bangladesh uh, <laughs> professor said ali hasan and present here a learned uh, dean of the faculty of medicine professor shajal krishna benerji and my colleague professor mohammad zahid hussain provost chancellor and head of the department of pediatric cardiology bangabandhu sheikh mujib medical university learned speaker choudhry meshkat ahmed and professor choudhry meshkat ahmed and professor mustafa jaman and present here learned uh, panelist and uh, from home and abroad professor arun arun and as well as professor haris choudhry and other dignitaries from the department of cardiology bangabandhu sheikh mujib medical university and other participants guests ladies and gentlemen very very good afternoon to you all it is my pleasure to be present in this august gathering and i am uh, in this pandemic situation this is the media to ex exchange our knowledge and uh, experience uh, so i do congratulate the organizers for organizing such a wonderful session and i hope this will be a successful one Uh, uh again i don't like to extend uh, take more time from you as because we are already late for half an hour i want to request you to uh, start the session thank you very much for inviting me thank you thank, thank you, you all thank, thank you my heartfelt thanks to vc professor konopant bolwa sir for his enlightening and inspiring speech for us uh now as you all know that there is a norm that the chairperson of the session talks last and conclude the session but due to some unavoidable situation i was told that chairman sir will uh, leave early so may i request professor said ali hasan sir to speak something for us thank you for uh, thank you Uh, honorable uh, today's uh, uh, chief guest honorable vice chancellor professor konar kandi burga sir and uh, honorable uh, pro vc uh, who is our special guest today research and development professor jaid hussain and our dean of medicine faculty of medicine professor shojal krishna banerji my dear colleagues learned audience from home and abroad assalamu alaikum it's a great privilege to an honor to me that i have been provided an opportunity to say a few words in this inaugural of webinar on cardiology organized by bsmmu and bangladesh cardiovascular research foundation i especially say heartful thanks to our vc sir for inspiring us in every steps of academic activity and i also thanks to two speakers professor meshkat choudhury meshkat hamer and Mustafa S and Mustafa Jaman for uh, who will deliver excellent lecture today. And at last, I also congratulate to Professor Mustafa Jaman again and Dipal Krishnodikari for arranging this scientific session, who is sponsored by Incepta. Unfortunately, due to unavoidable circumstances, I have to leave this meeting. However, I want to request Professor Shwajal Krishna Banerji. to continue this cme program on behalf of me and thank you everybody thank you chairman sir for your excellent deliberation uh, now we assume that professor shajal sir is our new chairman so with the permission from the chair may i request now professor sm mustafa jaman to tell something about covid 19 coagulopathy and cad what's new ami ebar ektu banglay boli karon ingrejite to moner bhasha thik prokash kora jay na mustafa jaman ke ashole 
একটা নিয়ম হলো যে স্পিকার কি পরিচয় করে দিতে হয় কিন্তু এখানে পরিচয় করার জন্য আমি খুব বেশি সময় ব্যয় করতে চাই না তার দুই একটা পরিচয় দিয়ে আমি তাকে একটু এনলাইট করতে চাই যেমন সে অনেকগুলো অর্গানাইজেশনের সঙ্গে জড়িত এবং সে খুব অ্যাক্টিভলি উনি আমাদের এই কার্ডিওলজিকে বাংলাদেশ এগিয়ে নিয়ে যাচ্ছেন তার মধ্যে উনি এই মুহূর্তে আমাদের বঙ্গবন্ধু শেখ মুজিব মেডিকেল ইউনিভার্সিটির প্রফেসর হিসেবে কাজ করছেন তিনি একজন ইন্টারন্যাশনাল কার্ডিওলজিস্ট তিনি অ্যাসোসিয়েশন অফ ফিজিশিয়ান্স অফ বাংলাদেশের প্রাক্তন সাধারণ সম্পাদক এবং প্রাক্তন পাবলিকেশন অ্যান্ড পাবলিসিটি সেক্রেটারি অফ বাংলাদেশ কার্ডিয়াক সোসাইটি হি ইজ অলসো কারেন্টলি নাও দ্য জেনারেল সেক্রেটারি জেনারেল অফ ঢাকা মেডিকেল কলেজ অ্যালামনি ট্রাস্ট and he is the ambassador of c3 in bangladesh and advisor of c3 complex cardiovascular therapeutics a us based global cardiology firm and currently the president of bangladesh cardiovascular research foundation may i request professor s m mustafa jaman to come up with his topic covid 19 coagulopathy and cat what's new Thank you, Professor Dipalk Nodekadi, for introducing me nicely. Uh, in the month of August, the whole nation is weeping, and we are uh, in the tragic month of Bengali nation. Uh, with due respect and solemnly, I am remembering the father of the nation, Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the architect of the country's independence. In this COVID pandemic, we are, we are losing a lot of our physicians, our frontliners, and we must remember them. and along with them uh, we also remember our uh, we are giving our thanks to the covid fighters who are fighting against this virus especially uh, this is very very important things in our life and just like 71 we are fighting against this virus again as a whole nation so good evening thank you covid fighters welcome you in this session all the uh, all our speakers especially professor shahid muska sc mohammed uh, we must welcome in the session and i must grateful uh, heartfelt gratitude, gratitude to our professor konokanti borua honorable vice chancellor of bangabandhu sheikh mujib medical university and our chief guest also in this webinar session special guest professor jahid hussain our chairman uh, professor sud sud ali hassan and uh, our also professor shahjal banerji our panelist learned participants uh, in our countries and abroad also i am going to present my speech and especially i hope this is very important session coagulopathy coronary disease and covid uh, uh, covid is then what's new in this topic i will present my case Uh, again i'm um, thank you actually i'm going to present my coagulopathy coronary dgs full slide uh, i am uh, first presenting a case report a 61 year old man with covid 19 presented with acute one set of angina with a fever a sore throat dyspnea cough myalgia and no history of close contact with a with a uh, covid-19 positive patient when risk factor hypertension smoking chronic obstructive pulmonary disease pca to history of pca to lad and rca two months back and patient is getting a few medication and already you have seen aspirin clopidogrel valsartan bisoprolol rosemary scandalactin nitroglycerin atrovastatin and the on presentation uh, the patient presented with a uh, oxygen saturation 94% and blood pressure was 140 over 80 millimeter mercury and heart rate was 90 per minute and temperature was uh, 98 all uh, fahrenheit and you were you will see the ecg and kidney and liver function was uh, ecg is uh, showing the st uh, elevation in precordial leads 
And now my question actually, uh, by if you see this ECG, is it ST elevation MI? Can you diagnose type one or type two MI? How to confirm diagnosis and what should be the treatment strategy? Because we know that uh, though sometimes it is very difficult to get the COVID test very early in case of this scenario. And uh, another uh, some uh, scenario, if patient with temperature is high with fever, then what should be the treatment strategy? Can we say this is a stillivation MI? Because we know this scenario of ECG may be persist with pericarditis, Takutsubo syndrome, and some other situation. So only ECG can we say this is a stillivation MI. And another thing that uh, along with this ECG, can I do some other investigation and which, which type of investigation uh, need to confirm the diagnosis and uh, especially for echocardiography and sometimes we do see coronary angiogram and CT angio also. Now, uh, what should be the treatment strategy if we don't know still now only this ECG, this is only for type 1 uh, MI or type 2, we will discuss in this regard uh, later. But uh, I'm, uh, some uh, strategy may be like this, only for conservative management, maybe with primary PCI. So uh, I will discuss in this, our panelist or our the junior fellow, they will discuss it later if, if needed. But this patient was uh, done uh, by cath the effort to cath lab uh, urgently. And we do this uh, stenting because the patient was uh, previous uh, to stand, especially for LAD and RCA, but LAD was uh, blocked, you know, and, uh, and ultimately the primary PC was done. But uh, if patient's temperature was high, can we do this patient, uh, refer to the cath lab and do, can we do this treatment policy? We'll discuss later. But uh, the virus is very deadly. Already everybody knows by our, and one third deaths were cardiac, according to our different study. And we'll see the picture that cardiovascular disease is a predominant among all comor comorbidities. The, the, uh, according to ESC, European Society of Cardiology, the cardiovascular involvement in COVID-19, the key manifestation and hypothetical mechanism, you will see the viral invasion, inflammation, and a uh, lot of cascade of reaction with immuno, immune activation and uh, myocardial damage. And you will see the uh, microvessel involvement, microvessel in involvement, myocarditis, and uh, cytokine storm, already myocardial dysfunction, arrhythmia, heart failure, plaque uh, rupture, and uh, uh, mac uh, acute coronary syndrome. All the things, all the things can be happen in COVID situation. And we'll discuss in this regard also. And we'll see, that, let's see also the another presentation, almost same things and the acute uh, SES and all types of myocarditis, psychotron uh, dysregulation, stress, cardiomyopathy, arrhythmia, heart, heart failure, everything can be possible also. But the ECG, uh, by the, only by the ECG, we can say that this is type 1 AMI and type 2 AMI because we know in case of COVID-19 situation, we get also type, type, type 2 AMI without any heart uh, stenosis. So this is very important actually. So, and see this, this COVID-19 infection and cardiac manifestation. The myocardial injury is very important things, especially by the di direct my viral cardiomyocyte and maybe immuno uh, reaction also. And you, you will see the microvascular dysfunction. Again, stress cardiomyopathy and a lot of inflammatory reaction and coagulopathy also. And with uh, oxygen supply demand imbalance, you will see you will see the type 2 MI and pre-existing atherosclerotic disease the type 1 MI also uh, we can diagnose and a uh, lot of uh, actually reaction in this regard we can see. And uh, the pathology we can see that very sh shortly we'll say the myocardial injury predominantly occurs indirectly due to systemic cytokines or directly due to viral cardiomyocyte infection or some other mechanism. Acute cellular injury due to SARS-CoV-2 cardiomyocyte, pericyte or fibroblast infection via Angiotensin converting enzyme 2 mediated entry also. This direct cellular injury, edema, and necrosis can lead to contractile dysfunction and clinical symptoms. Inflammatory response with marked cytokine production commonly occurs in 
hospitalized patients with severe or critical COVID-19. The target tissue SARS cov to express numerous spikes proteins on the surface of the viral envelope that are vital to the transmission of infection. And the angiotensin uh, converting into 2 is predominantly found in lung endothelium, pericytes, cardiomyocytes, enterocytes in the small intestine, including the duodenum, jejunum, ileum, and arterial and venous endothelial cells also. And for that reason, we are a lot of uh, actual complication related to this site also. The coagulopathy is very, very important uh, because the, we know the uh, COVID-19 actually associated two types of uh, problem. One, not only for arterial, it may involve the venous system also. And for that reason, coagulopathy is very, very important, especially for uh, in our lecture, we'll discuss elaborately. Though the previous slide was all, uh, was related to some myocardial injury, was SES, but in the now the fuse slide will discuss coagulopathy and with this relation some relative some uh, slide. Especially this coagulopathy is not like the hematologist coagula coagulopathy. This is COVID nineteen coagulopathy. This is some uh, actually special some uh, scenario and profound in inflammatory response especially interleukin-6 levels correlate with fibrinogen levels, ESR, CRP elevated in this scenario, and thromboinflammation, very, very important also, and interaction between inflammatory pathways and coagulation, and a lot of pathways in increase the production of fibrinogen, other factors, intrinsic coagulation pathway activated, uh, intrinsic uh, pathway activated, platelets activated, endothelial cell dysfunction, stasis in small vessel, but still now a lot of debate is it true or not? It, uh, because a big question is still now, all are this mediated or not? But we are learning every, every day, newer things and newer information. So time will say the actually what exact mechanism of coagulopathy, but we are discussion, we'll discuss the latest actually information in this regard. COVID-19 associated coagulopathy. Uh, again, I will mention that macrovascular thrombosis, especially for venous thrombosis, DVT, pulmonary embolism, and arterial thrombosis, SCS stroke, and microvascular thrombosis, especially ARDS may be happen. And venous thromboembolism is commoner than arterial thrombosis. COVID-19 associated coagulopathy versus DIC. Very, this is also, uh, we, we, we do a lot of investigation, especially for platelet count, actually COVID a situation that platelet not much less because we uh, will get always not less than one lakh and like this and markedly reduced in DIC and D dimer is elevated in COVID situation also and also DIC situation and bleeding is fibrinogen is very important in this uh, elevated in COVID-19 but big praise in DIC so we can differentiate very uh, carefully with these two investigation and bleeding is less common in coagulopathy, but more common in DIC. Thrombosis in hospitalized patients with COVID-19, uh, especially you'll see some uh, percentage venous is 62.2%, especially in thrombotic events in 16% here, pulmonary embolism 3.2, DVT 3.9%, arterial 11.1%, uh, and ischemic stroke 1.6 percent, AMI 8.9 percent, systemic thromboemboli 1 percent. If all the uh, actually source uh, will get in the slide in the uh, actually for that reason I will not mention the source uh, because you will see in the slide also for that reason this is JAMA and among ICU patients was some thrombotic thrombotic event I will not mention elaborately here. Incidence and mortality of pulmonary embolism in COVID-19 is systematic review and meta-analysis, especially uh, incidence of pulmonary embolism is 15.3%. And among this 15.3%, mortality of COVID-19 patients with pulmonary embolism, 45%. And for that reason, we had again mentioned that coagulopathy is very, very important in COVID-19 situation. And we know every, everybody that in our uh, pathology chapter, we, we actually read this Stride. Again, we are mentioning this stasis, vessel wall injury, vessel wall injury and hypercoagulability. And uh, this stride to represent, represents a fundamental construct in which three components interact to establish an environment favoring or provoking 
thrombosis and for that reason thrombosis also very very important in covid 19 situation coagulopathy will, will get the picture actually sars cov 2 and then inflammatory storm ras dysregulation endothelial injury coagulation activation hypoxemia hypercoagulable state and thrombotic vascular events and on both sides we'll see the where we can use the antiviral drug remdesivir and other and in, in case of hypoxemia we can use oxygen therapy ventilation a lot of things and interleukin uh, uh, especially interleukin 6 uh, signal evasion in our country we're not dealing with this chapter for that reason will not go elaborately in this interleukin or cytokine and uh, factors increasing risk of thrombosis especially SARS-CoV-2 related angiotensin increases cytokines tissue factor and plasminogen activator inhibitor all are increased in this situation i'll not go elaborately and this is actually in lancet published and very recently that diagnostic approach will do some uh, limited some investigation we can do d-dimer protrumin time platelets should be repeated and therapeutic management consider especially especially for vte venous thromboembolism in presence with uh, with rapid respiratory deterioration and high d-dimer concentration and then we use we can use subcutaneous low molecular weight heparin for all hospitalized patients and some other considerations uh, especially for ct angiography or ultrasound venous system for lower extremity we can do this and if diagnostic testing is not possible and there is no bleeding risk consider therapeutic anticoagulation other interventions especially your plasma exchange other anticoagulants anti-inflammatory drugs are experimental still now Thromboprophylaxis and coagulopathy in COVID situation. Current evidence suggests that patients affected by this novel coronavirus are more prone to venous thromboembolism, mainly due to hypoxia, systematic, a systemic inflammatory response, prolonged immobilization. All patients admitted to hospital with confirmed or suspected COVID-19 should at least have the following test, CBC or uh, full blood count, urea plus liver function test, coagulation screening, and D-dimer. And the D-dimer is very, very important. Everybody knows uh, this is the marker of fibrin breakdown. And uh, fibrin is an equivalent. And D-dimer is two different units. And especially raised in DVT, pulmonary embolism, and DIC. Uh, this is very sensitive, but low specificity, especially for VTE, because it may be raises in inflammation, sepsis, malignancy, trauma, liver disease, heart disease even in pregnancy also. And for the reason, uh, region, this may or may not indicate the venous thromboembolism, especially for D-dimer. But uh, this is very uh, informative, uh, actually, slide for the reason. Because again, I am showing another another uh, slide that the more the severity uh, is, it will related to potential for increased risk of venous thromboembolism and adverse outcomes is bedridden patient, especially for stasis, inflammatory response, endothelial injury, hemostatic, abnormality, DIC. And we'll see the uh, see the actually pyramid shape. The more uh, the serious complication, asymptomatic to mild, moderate, severe, even death, the more need to VTE prophylaxis, if not contraindicated. So this is very important, especially for high, that patients actually uh, in hospitalized patient, that should be, uh, the prophylaxis should be given. In case of mild uh, COVID-19 patient, no pharmacoprophylaxis general, uh, is needed in general, but mobility encourages pharmacoprophylaxis only in high risk. And prior indicated antithrombotics uh, thrombosis should be continued. Warfarin may be substituted with NOAX or low molecular weight heparin. In case of moderate or severe COVID-19, who should receive? Actually, all if no active bleeding. What should receive? low molecular weight heparin or unfraction heparin, uh, but low molecular weight heparin is preferable. And what should be the regimen? Prophylactic, and you will see uh, the, especially for prophylactic dose, an exoparin 40 milligram on daily, intermediate dose, an exoparin 40 milligram twice daily, therapeutic dose, an exoparin one milligram per kg twice daily. But a lot of uh, study and a lot of guidelines Actually, that may be some difference, difference in this type of actually uh, therapeutic or prophylactic dose. And you will see that different uh, guidelines are showing different type of dose. And especially where recommendation is very, you know, in Bangladesh, lot in, especially in our COVID hospital, 
the uh, in my experience uh, all every hospital do not use the guideline and in our in bangladesh guideline I'll, actually my my i am saying that that if you do give adequate otherwise this may cause problem so it is very important the prophylactic dose therapeutic dose it should be as per guideline uh, if uh, and can wax be used for vt prophylaxis especially in bangladesh situation our patient do not go actually hospital in case of in severe moderate to severe case also and our doctors we are giving telemedicine uh, our patients uh, with uh, instead of low molecular weight heparin we are giving different type of nox and as vt prophylaxis but that is not adequate because can if we give the question can nox be used for vt prophylaxis generally no but there may be some other uh, mm -hmm. debate this is maybe debatable but generally no because some papers favoring in this regard but why not nox for vt prophylaxis uncertain absorption because of frequent gi upset drug interaction unreliable drug concentration in acutely ill patients renal impairment very very frequent in critical covid-19 illness and longer acting and antagonist may not be readily available and in mod moderate to severe covid-19 in dic usually over bleeding no anticoagulation and i'll not go over the rest of the slide because this is not uh, very very important because mm -hmm. platelet is not enough reduced in this in this covid-19 situation prognosis uh, patients with serious infection are more likely to have covid-19 associated coagulopathy than patients with mild infection and those who die from covid-19 are more likely to have met with ists criteria for dic compared to survivors elevated ddmr at admission and markedly increasing ddmr levels 3 to 4 fold over time are associated with high mortality likely reflecting coagulation in activation from infection sepsis cytokine storm and impending organ failure at uh, the current guideline what says actually we are saying some uh, this is uh, again i mentioning the uh, especially for d dimer uh, the, this is british thoracic society guideline uh, but uh, you will see the d dimer less than 1000 microgram per liter and if high risk d dimer less than well, actually 1000 to 1000 to 3000 and another is actually, actually ddmr is a uh, 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 3000 more than microgram so actually the anticoagulation regimen is changes with this ddmr but all are not following this type of uh, actually study at uh, this guideline so actually this is only for uh, discussion and uh, guidelines uh, for thrombo prophylaxis in covid-19 lot of guideline american society of hematology Uh, this is updated and the thrombo prophylaxis recommended yes standard dose in all hospitalized patients should be needed and low molecular weight heparin or unfractioned heparin and post discharge prophylaxis not in general only if vt risk in high is high then we can use international society of thrombosis hemo, uh, uh, and hemostasis as i already mentioned that yes standard dose uh, for thrombo prophylaxis recommended but uh, uh, here also low molecular weight heparin over and uh, unfractioned heparin but post discharge prophylaxis yes low molecular weight heparin or nox for 2 to 6 weeks if if vte risk is high and bleeding risk is low chest guideline and expert panel reported by another american college of chest physicians they also uh, uh, they are using uh, drug low molecular weight heparin or fondaparinux over unfractioned heparin and nox also but post discharge prophylaxis yes if low risk of bleeding national institute of health usa they also uh, profile like pharmaco prof uh, pharmacological prophylaxis recommend hospitalized patients as per standard of care for non covid hospitalized patient and post discharge prophylaxis not in general only if vt risk is high and bleeding risk is low as per non covid 19 patients and in bangladesh the, uh, our who also mentioned that uh, yes uh, uh, in all hospitalized as per local and international standards and drug uh, absolutely low molecular weight heparin and post discharge prophylaxis no mention actually as yes, now and national guidelines of in bangladesh updated may 28 but very soon we'll get another uh, actual guideline with a modified form of with some uh, our view of cardiological uh, actually 
incorporate some study and some are uh, senior professors and we also give some information in this regard especially for our covid 19 and vt related some ad, uh, special ad, ad, ad advice and uh, you'll see that low molecular weight heparin or unfraction heparin uh, in, in especially in hospital patients but post discharge prophylaxis extended use of noax for one month this is because uh, this is modified this one month actually in our modification, but not found in other international uh, guidelines. So uh, this is actually a modified uh, form of our different guideline. And uh, cardiovascular, again, I'm, I'm going to cardiovascular because we have started with this cardiovascular and SES and other some myocardial injury. Again, I, 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 I discussed some coagulopathy related some uh, slide. Now, again, I'm coming cardiovascular comorbidity and common in COVID-19, but incidence of SCS is still unknown, the exact pathology. Uh, already mentioned maybe type one MI, type two, with uh, maybe uh, we are getting uh, Takur Suba syndrome also with coagulopathy and high coagulopathy state. So the, the circulation actually, uh, still elevation, the circulation present this slide, still elevation myocardial infraction in patients with COVID-19. Though the number of patients is very low, only 28 COVID-19 patients, but in the uh, uh, circulation is very prestigious, uh, uh, actually journal, and uh, we'll get 60% had culprit lesion requiring PCI. That means uh, this is type one or maybe uh, atherothrombosis related, but 40% did not have any obstruction. So this is very, very important because related to type two MI also, and some other features. So SES in COVID, COVID-19 induced SES may result from plaque rupture, coronary spasm, or microthrombi wing to systemic inflammation or cytokine storm. Diagnosis may not be straightforward. Again, I mentioned stillivation may be due to pericarditis also because the stillivation uh, in previous, uh, uh, the first lecture I'm also mentioning the stillivation not only for uh, our question was, is can we say the ECG is due to escalation MI because this type of feature may be associated with pericarditis also and Takusuba syndrome also. Levated troponin may result from myocardial injury or non-cardiac etiology. In COVID-19, troponin elevates in five to 25% of hospitalized patients and correlates with disease severity. The ST segment elevation, this is the New England Journal uh, slide. Again, we'll see the 60% had obstruction, obstructive disease, and 43% had non-obstructive disease. So the very, very similar type one, type two, both type of MI or other disease. And this is also another important, the interpretation of elevated troponin, especially the more the troponin uh, is actually associated with the more complication, we will see the mild uh, elevation, maybe two to three times upper normal limit, uh, especially, but in marked elevation more than five times, this is related to shock, severe respiratory failure, tachycardia, systemic hypoxemia, myocarditis, Takusuba syndrome, and type one MI also. The different type, especially for uh, different society, are they are uh, given a lot of actually uh, this type of uh, uh, table. And most of the table, they actually says actually, number one, COVID-19 is a prothrombotic disease. Coagulopathy in COVID-19 is characterized by normal or mildly reduced platelet count and elevated D-dimer and fibrinogen. DIC may be a late feature. Both macrovascular and microvascular thrombosis occurs. Venous thrombosis is commoner than arterial. Thromboembolism occurs even in presence of antithrombotics. Antiplatelets are probably not effective this is actually debatable. Again, I mentioned thromboprophylaxis is indicated in all hospitalized COVID-19 patients. Low molecular weight 
heparin is the mainstay of thromboprophylaxis nuax are generally not recommended this is also debatable every covid-19 patient should undergo risk assessment for thrombosis and bleeding combination of clinical and laboratory parameters should be used for monitoring of anticoagulation ddmr has high sensitivity but low specificity for diagnosing vte significant lv and rv dysfunction has been noted in covid-19 patients such cardiac dysfunction which can be often transient has also been noted in uh, that means uh, we can uh, actually uh, find the tracheostomy syndrome also and debate exists about the role of s inhibitor rb already i mentioned previously tachyarrhythmia such as atrial fibrillation flutter uh, supraventricular tachycardia are often associated with any infection as a new onset arrhythmia or poses challenges in rare uh, rate control all estilization mis where possible require immediate revascularization with P primary pci due to significant mort mortality and morbidity benefits uh, for centers offering primary pci service for estilization mi we need covid 19 dedicated cath lab with negative pressure cath lab proper training of cath lab staff and enhancement of infection control network thank you again i salute the heroes and covid fighters thank you very much and for passion sharing hello 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 shunajay mm, shunajay awesome awesome as usual thank you professor s m mustafa jaman for your excellent and very inspiring issues for this pandemic time i am really impressed amar byaktigoto torof theke ektu koi fear dewar byapar ache ami ashole prothomei sign in korechilam kintu technical karone amake shona chilo na bole ektu deri hoyeche tachhara eto taroka presenter der sathe kaaj korte ektu nervousness lage ami asha kori jara participant achen amar ei okkhomota ke ektu khoma sundor dishtite dekhben kintu चौधरी or the best teacher has got lifetime uh, award for his lifetime achievements for the contribution in the field of echocardiography and so on and so on so may i request professor choudhury mishkat ahmed with his unusual and exceptional talk heading the unsung equation ed equal to ed नाम गुपियामान এরপরে আমি যাকে দেখতে পাচ্ছি প্রফেসর বদিউজ্জামান ফ্রম ন্যাশনাল হার্ট ফাউন্ডেশন এন্ড রিসার্চ ইনস্টিটিউট এরপরে আমি দেখতে পাচ্ছি প্রফেসর আব্দুল ওয়াদুদ চৌধুরী স্যার কে অরুণ মাসকি ফ্রম নেপাল এন্ড রবি মাল্লা ফ্রম নেপাল কাইন্ডলি টেকনিক্যাল টিম প্লিজ অ্যাড देम অ্যাজ প্যানেলিস্ট জি স্যার আমি থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ স্যার স্যার প্লিজ কন্টিনিউ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ ভেরি মাচ ফর দা কাইন্ড ইন্ট্রোডাকশন honorable chairman sir my respected teachers officer uh, kanak kanti borua sir the honorable vice chancellor bsmmu officer jahid husain sir honorable pro vice chancellor the distinguished professor of department of cardiology bsmmu and other distinguished delegates uh, today i have started with an un unusual story 
but to me it appeared was an interesting part uh, especially during this covid period when we have got some relaxation and we, we can tell some story and we can go go out of way to some extent so my presentation will not be that academic as that of professor jaman but uh, let me put the story the story began when a study in minnesota very near to mayo clinic revealed that the patient with erectile dysfunction if they are at the age of their 40s have three times more chance developing cardiovascular disease so as age progresses although the although the difference is but there seems that the patient with erectile dysfunction do suffer from from more coronary artery disease and as we know when we deal with erectile dysfunction it occurs almost in 50% of the population when their age is at 50 and 70% of the population when their age is 70 and every one third of them do have erectile dysfunction due to vasogenic origin so erectile dysfunction of vasogenic origin which tells tell us about the future coronary artery events that gives us a window period when we when we can if we can intervene this patient with life modification risk factor modification and other essential drug maybe we we will be able to prevent coronary artery disease from this patient so study also also reveals that when a patient do have coronary artery disease almost 50% of them do have erectile dysfunction so we have got two group of patient one group of patient who are detected by other other specialist maybe urologist maybe a psychiatrist or general practitioner if they found that their patient do have the erectile dysfunction in their young age and if that erectile dysfunction is due to vasogenic origin then they should be uh, there should be every effort to prevent cardiovascular disease in those patient on the other hand there are number of our cardiovascular patient at least 50% of our patient will have concomitant erectile dysfunction so so today's topic will about all these two groups of patients so these are the few studies showing increased amount of calcium scoring in patient who has got erectile dysfunction and we know when there is increased calcium score there is increased chances of coronary artery disease this study is also from patient population with erectile dysfunction showing that th this group of patient do have increased c reactive protein interleukin the von willi friend the von willi brand factors and other factor which eventually give rise to coronary artery disease and the more important is this slide which shows that the brachial artery flow mediated vasodilatation which is just, which is a surrogate marker for endothelial dysfunction which is much prevalent in patient with erectile dysfunction so patient with erectile dys dysfunction we call it ed who also has got a remarkable amount of endothelial dysfunction that is the equation that should be being in our mind to put a great canvas of male health that will that i will come later on and another interesting thing happens in this study where 50 men with erectile dysfunction underwent a uh, exercise tolerance test of them 28 has positive and out of those 28 positive patient 20 angiographic positive patient could be detected that is among 50 patient almost 40% patient with erectile dysfunction were revealed to have the exercise inducible myocardial ischemia so now where we stand we have the stable plaque in one hand the, the right the, the right side of the hand and we have got sorry so we have we have got stable plaque and we had we have got unstable patient 
we were talking about those group of patients, young patients at their 40s, who eventually develop coronary artery disease. Probably they were having this unstable plaque, which was the result due to result from the un, unstable instability in the hemodynamic and rheological factor. But on the right side of the screen, we can also find that since this patient also showed positive uh, exercise tolerance test, this means that those patients had significant occlusive coronary artery disease to produce ischemia. So two form of hypothesis can be put. One is arterial hypothesis, which indicates that since the penile artery is a smaller one, so they ought to have the burden of atherosclerosis early to show the manifestation. So, so what we get from, from, from all this information, from all, all this investigation information, what we could, we, we could gather is that the patient with erectile dysfunction, maybe they have unstable angina or they, maybe they have a stable angina with progressive uh, evidence of progressive inducible ischemia. These are the group actually has to be segre segregated from the normal population. This is the algorithm which has which has been shown by the uh, World Sex Medicine Association in their uh, consensus meeting in 2016, known as Princeton Two Two guideline. Generally, we we stratify our patient who do not have any coronary artery disease to know whether this patient will have any coronary artery disease. We generally make a risk stratification the Framingham risk stratification or the score risk stratification and many other risk stratification are there. And if the patient do belong in the high risk group, we prescribe them high and intensive lifestyle modification and risk, risk factor modification. And if the patient is in, in, in the intermediate zone, they, are, they, are, they undergo certain non-invasive tests to find out their subsequent coronary risk. But here in this chart, we can see Younger patients with erectile dysfunction also should go for certain tests to know whether they are going to develop coronary artery disease. So this is the equation, erectile dysfunction, which is a surrogate mar marker of uh, endothelial dysfunction, should always put in our mind that the canvas is not as narrow as that because other chronic communicable disease like diabetes mellitus and hypertension also do have some form of endothelial dysfunction. So endothelial dis erectile dysfunction, which is the clinical manifestation of the endothelial dysfunction, that is, that is, that is the way we know that the, if, if clinically a patient do have endothelial dysfunction. Actually, these are the group, these, these bring us to the fact that if some patient has already got some form of endothelial dysfunction, they ought to develop diabetes and hypertension also. So the canvas is wide. In the canvas, we get coronary artery disease. In the canvas, we get diabetes mellitus, hypertension, erectile dysfunction, and we should be able to put all the equation together to give benefit to our patients. These are the few studies telling Uh, revealing the fact that if we have endothelial dysfunction, then then we are uh, uh, we are ought to develop the hypertension or diabetes. So, key elements for a successful male longevity comes to the final part of this equation. Why we went for the equation? We went for the equation to find out the people at risk. You look at the male's health, which is generally less stressed, less to speak about, less, less sung about, because the, the, the initial three part of the male health is related with atherosclerotic heart disease. And if you look at the South Asian men, they are prone to sudden cardiac death, they are highly stressed, the sole breadwinner of the family, the care, the multiple family responsibility, the neglect himself in the process, hardly ever 
visit the hospital and no specific mustard health program directed at his longevity, long health. So we need to know the equation. A good number of this population are going to have one or other form of erectile dysfunction, which can bring us to the point of endothelial dysfunction. And these are the group of the patient in whom if we want to establish the proper male health, then we have to know the equation. On the top of that equation, we have the deadly quartal of diabetes, obesity, and hypertension and hyperlipidemia. So the male in this part of the world are very vulnerable to have the chronic communicable disease. That was the actual idea of today's topics. So, so, so the, the, the string of clue is erectile dysfunction, which is quite prevalent in, in, in patient with age more than 50. And they are the hair bringer of erect, uh, um, endothelial dysfunction. And when, ere when erectile dysfunction starts, the clock of cardiovascular disease starts ticking. So what, what was the decision in Princeton, Princeton conference? It was question on their part. Then, then should, we, should, we, should we treat this group of patients as uh, as if they have cardiovascular disease, the way we treat the cardiovascular treat the cardiovascular patient uh, uh, in respect of secondary prevention, uh, it was it was question aroused by the, them. But incidentally, the cardiac guys in their 2010 conference, European Conference for Cardiology, 2012 conference for ACC AHA guide AHA, AHA, AHA and in 2013. Despite, despite knowing the fact that patients with erectile dysfunction are a vulnerable group, which, which, have the, which, ha, which has the propensity of the risk, which is equal to that of diabetes, family history, and hypertension as regard coronary artery disease, but they still neglecting the issue. But the guys who are, who are in responsibility of treating the erectile dysfunction are quite aware. They want to treat them as these are the people should receive some treatment for secondary prevention. Move question, Isheta. Well, sorry, sorry for the interruption. And even, even, even the whole whole theme was there in in the general population. Shara Kennedy was BBC to the the uh, the Don the Don uh, broadcaster. Uh, he, he, she was a very popular broadcaster in BBC Two radio, who who used to run the morning program. They also took the topics into into general discussion whether we should this patient with erectile dysfunction as a means for preventing cardiovascular event. And. Uh, as we know, the good, good, the good male health can increase the longevity. These are the few slides you all, the cardiologists, know about. There is increased risk, there is increased risk of cardiovascular disease, which goes in proportion to C-reactive protein. And again, C-reactive protein is more prevalent in patients with erectile dysfunction. This is the famous Jupiter study, study which shows that the patient with high LDL cholesterol and high C reactive protein. And if we can uh, put them into three arm, then we find that the patient who has got less LDL cholesterol and less C reactive protein are tend to have less mortality. So are we going to address this sort of patient with anti-cholesterol drug? So that these are the patient who have got LDL cholesterol, who has got diabetes, hypertension, and other risk factor and as well as increased C-reactive protein. Can we, can we treat this patient to about their, their cardiovascular event? The problem is not that simple, not that straightforward, because, because statin of the drug, which also, which also is involved in the synthesis of testosterone. So the effect of testosterone, if we apply this for, for primary prevention of cardiovascular disease in patients with uh, erectile dysfunction might have detrimental effect on their sex health. 
respected chairman sir i'll i'll little deviate from my original academic discussion this is actually a poster this po this poster is about the advertisement of a very lay tablet which is being prescribed in america this is the l arginine is the component which restores the endothelial health and eventually restores the cardiac diabetic and other factors you can see very nature of this poster where the name cardio miracle has also been given but why i have put this picture into this academic arena because incidentally this poster speak about the whole male health this picture tells about the sexual dysfunction which is related with the long term diseases that prevail in the male that is the diabetes hypertension and the coronary artery disease so this is about dr joe penderson pendergas he was a he was a famous endocrinologist in in california there was a story about this physician uh the hospital where he used to refer his patient uh one day his wife received a letter from the hospital saying that we we condole the death of dr joe because dr joe was sending so many patient for coronary artery bypass and angioplasty and now for months we, we are not getting any any patient from him and we really condole his demise uh, his disappearance but what was the real fact then uh, revealed dr joe says that in 1990 one 30 percent of his diabetic patient was ended up with cardiological bypass or other procedure and after 9 years of treatment with l arginine his practice now, now do not have any patient with heart attack so it seems to be like a propaganda it seems to be to like a promotion from the industry it was very silly and very simple simple thing but had it not be the fiction had it been the story where we can address the endothelial factors and thus can can cure the patient from diabetes and coronary artery disease how wonderful it could be so i went to the, to search all this fact into the uh, into the google interestingly in recent google search i found there are some interesting article arginine a marvel or aquacari this was a this was a um, link another link was why being the main stream treatment is not always best and another another article is saying the uh, cardiac miracle endorsement so why i have put this fiction or this semi truth or this promotional topics into today's topics because it tells about it tells us about the story of endothelial function this is the journal which was published in may 14 2020 which emphasizes the prize winning the nobel prize winning discovery of nitric oxide and the importance of nitric oxide that derives from the endothelial cell and their protective function on cardiovascular and other structure and this is the drug uh the cyclic gmp stimulating drug uh verusigat is under trial to see whether this drug can be used in heart failure and still more importance is given by the endothelial dysfunction group in covid-19 group the europe the european atherosclerotic group and the europe Euro european council for basic cardiovascular group They, they are now proposed that the endothelial biomarker and the test function should be evaluated for usefulness of risk stratification in covid-19 patient so the 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 erectile dysfunction ed which which brought us to the endothelial dysfunction ed has now been given a lot of lot of emphasis so long the long term health of a male is concerned with the permission of chair i want to show some slides because during this pandemic we have lost many of our colleagues i have deep condolences for for them this is the picture 
the, the great Indian actor Amitabh Bachchan when he was relieved from the hospital on the way to his home, he said that all the temple are closed because the people resident in the temple are now in the hospital. And you can see in this picture, what was the choice for them other than to come to the hospital to save these patients. There is still more poetry about the pandemic and the physician. This is story from Lampadani. The conjoint effort of the physician to fight out the pandemic, the poetry of their joint fight. They are preparing for the next roster duty, which is also a poetry. Poetry lies in their despair, their their frustration, their disappointment, and their their anxiety for their patients. And this also depicts the poetry of a physician in fighting the media. We know how how good they have fought the media, which was which was so 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 venomous against the physician. And this poetry will be unique. And this picture also depicts the poetry that has been formed in every house of our physician with the with the mask and the and the great lady with, with baby in, in her home attending attending the COVID hospital. Uh, doctors also struggling for their job. This is from one of our gynecologist colleagues saying that sending his son on the very first day of COVID in our BSMU hospital. My eyes were wet with this picture because our honorable vice chancellor who has protected us so much, but on the very first day, he sent his son to the COVID hospital. And what poetry could be here? Had he not been my vice chancellor, I could have so many lines to depict about this picture. But you know, this is the picture which tells its own poetry. She's a, she's a daughter of, a, of our, one of our colleagues who, who had burned, uh, who, who, are, who, who was a victim of accidental burn due to sanitizer. So now we'll turn to our cardiac disease and how, how we are going to manage our cardiac population with erectile dysfunction. I'll be very quick in this part. History, you all know what should we look at. A uh, few questions. Uh, whether the patient with cardiovascular disease can have normal se sexual activity? Uh, the answer is, if the patient has good functional capacity, if he, if he can climb up to four stair, then nothing should be done. He can go for physical activity. But if the patient has some restriction, then probably some, some uh, stress test can be done to find out his functional capacity and thereafter his normal sexual activity can be resumed. Whether they have to modify their practice, so long they have normal practice, normal, normal sex practice, they, they need not to modify their practice. But there are certain group of people uh, for whom the sexual activity should not be advisable. These are the least, unstable angina, myocardial infarction, heart failure and other things. And for the management of this patient, whether they can go for sexual activity or not, exercise tolerance test is good enough. If the patient can work for six minutes, yes, he can go for normal sexual activity. Uh, and very important is lifestyle modification, need less to say, risk factor modification. And how is about antihypertensive drug in this patient? Uh, are all of them have detrimental effect? No. Some of them have beneficial effect, like like uh, nevibelol and like uh, angiotensin receptor blocker. They are claimed to have some beneficial effect on uh, on um, erectile dysfunction. Thiazide and beta blockers are generally uh, avoided, but nevibelol is a beta blocker which has got rather beneficial effect. Statin. There are a lot of about the statin. 
there are recently published 11 meta analyses showing there is mild improvement in the erectile dysfunction when the patient is receiving statin. So when a patient has got myocardial infarction and other ischemic heart disease, statin should be continued because it really do not change the uh, erectile function much. And recently published, uh, published data from HOP3, which, is, which included almost 6,000 patients, have shown some improvement in, uh, in, uh, in their uh, <clears throat> erectile function when they have statin. So statin can be given safely in patients who have got established erectile dysfunction and established coronary artery disease, but there, there should be some concern to give statin in patients who has got uh, who has got no established coronary artery disease. In those group of patients, probably more study will be required. Uh, this is about phosphodiesterase inhibitor, the, the, the magic pill that is being used by the lay people, whether, uh, whether they can be used in patients with coronary artery disease. Actually, this drug has got so many potential beneficial effects. Actually, these are the drug also, also make alive the endothelium. Other than the other than the generation of the progenitor cell, and other than the vessel revascularization effect and the ischemic preconditioning, it has got its effects on inflammatory cell, on the leukotriene and other other uh, other portion. So PDE inhibitor can very safely be given in, in a patient with in cardiac patient with erectile dysfunction, and maybe by giving this drug, we are giving some benefit to the coronary arteries as well. Uh, there is again controversy about using uh, testosterone. Testosterone cannot be used in a patient with heart failure or having active coronary artery disease, but young patient without any coronary involvement or middle-aged patient without coronary involvement who has got erectile dysfunction can, can be given testosterone. So we do not know whether the aggressive reduction of multifactorial in intervention in patient with erectile dysfunction will lead cardiovascular event rate reduced because unless we have a have a, have a have a randomized study we cannot we cannot give any conclusion we even do not know whether the what is the dose dependent effect of statin on erectile function whether the low dose statin do benefit to this group of patient and higher group do some harm to this patient is is the question to be answered and also we need to know what are the long-term beneficial effect of phosphodiesterase inhibitor to reduce the CV effect. I, I am at the end of my presentation. This is the a story about Professor Alfred Kingsey. In 1990, in, in 1930, in Indiana University, they had no department known as sexual medicine, as sexology, sorry. So a patient, so a professor from biology was selected to introduce this subject in Indiana University. So when he went to the university, he found that there were no book at that time, which, which, which used to tell about the sexual behavior, human behavior. So he started gathering the data. And after four years, he published his first book, Sexual Behavior in Human Male. It was so popular and it was, uh, used to uh, used to sold like hot cake, uh, and he was about to give a Nobel Prize. Uh, the different sexual behavior of human male, but after two to three years, when she started publishing the sexual behavior in human female, depicting the different abrasion in their sexual practice, the whole American were not ready to accept this professor's version. They used to sh they used to see their lady as Mother Mary. So the concept still prevail among the American. People are with taboo, people are, are, are little shaky, people are, have the shame to express their sexual, uh, sexual concern about everything. But we are the physician who should go beyond, beyond all these rituals to find out what problem a male really having. And we should be able to depict a greater canvas where we can include all the male problem, all the problem that occurs in the vasculature so that our patients are more benefited. Thank you very much for the patient hearing.
Hello. Hello. Kya baat? Kya baat? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Ami shudhu matro ekta kothai moni ashche. Robin Nath theke dhar kore. Suna dachhe amake? Ha, sunchi. Suna dachhe. Tumi kemon kore gan koro he guni? Mishkat sir, I was telling why you were so unique in my horrifying job with catecholamine SARS, though I was just absorbed how you were mesmerizing the whole audience with this complicated subject. Hats off for you. There are some comments. I, I got just two comments and I want to express to you one comment from Professor Jahanar Arju, excellent presentation. Another from Dr. Sudhir, excellent presentation, sir. Heads off to you. Audience, dear audience, ja, now we have come to the end of the presentation and there are some provisions of uh, answering some questions, if you can. Uh, till now, I have three questions I have written in, uh, in between the lectures. Can I ask the question, please? Mm, sure. The first question is from Dr. Kamrul Hossein Abhi. He queried about, is there any possibility of reinfection by coronavirus? If yes, why and have any world record? Professor Jaman, would you uh, like to answer this question, please? Uh, yes, though our lot of uh, panelists, uh, if uh, I'd be happy if they answer it, otherwise I will answer. Uh, I'd request because a lot of panelists here. So I'd request our panelists because uh, uh, they will give more good answer, but I will, I will, okay, I can okay. Answer. How about whom can I, I ask this question, please? Okay, I'm, I'm I'm giving answer. If if any uh, if anybody here to give answer here. Okay, actually uh, the uh, up to uh, this date, actually according to WHO or other some uh, actually study, the uh, there is no proven data for reinfection by coronavirus. Actually, there may be all more uh, three to four times positive by coronavirus in rt pcr that should be that is possible due to uh, uh, actually replicant incompetent virus or uh, actually for the reason rt pcr may be positive two to three times four times uh, according to cdc they told that uh, 12 up to 12 uh, weeks uh, it, it can be positive but that by, by this positive uh, actually report that patient could not transmit infection to others. That is actually non. The, 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 uh, this is not actually transferable virus where for, for the it cannot affect other other person. But patient may be uh, actually positive. But so this is not a reinfection, and because the, the uh, because due to uh, uh, replicant incompetent virus actually for that reason actually I, I, this is my opinion. But if any new information uh, given by other, uh, because a lot of senior people here I know in this conference seminar, so webinar. So uh, I would request any, uh, any comments in this regard, they can say and they can, because this is my view and this, this is my opinion. Our uh, senior Sardirikto uh, panelist could have to yeah, Jenny, in September, I am Bolton Nag. Doctor Jaman ke kotha bolte chhe to supplementation kori. Je RT PCR onik din important the positive hote pare. Arakta bepar idhar nahi bola hote There may be the reactivation. Kar these are the RNA. Bode chhe ke tarat aur eliminate hote na. Theke jate. So reactivation chance of reactivation me oka. Ite ke baad ya jate na. আর ওই কথা বলার সময় এখনই আসেনি যে রি ইনফেকশন হচ্ছে কিনা এখানে মেমোরি টি সেল তৈরি হচ্ছে তো যদি অ্যান্টিবডি আমরা দেখি যে আড়াই থেকে তিন মাস পর্যন্ত বডিতে अवेलेबल কিন্তু তারপরে যদি এটা ডিসিপেয়ার করে যায় মেমোরি টি সেল উইল বি देयर যদি পরে কোনো ইনফেকশন রি ইনফেকশন হয় তো সেটা হয়ে যাবে 
ফলে ডক্টর জামান যেটা বললেন সেটা ঠিক যে ডেড সেল থেকেও কিন্তু আরটিপিসিআর পজিটিভ হবে তো এটাকে আমি বলতে পারি না রিইনফেকশন আমি বড় যে বলতে পারি রিঅ্যাক্টিভেশন যে কারণে এখন কথা হচ্ছে যে পোস্ট কোভিড সিনড্রোম পোস্ট কোভিড সিনড্রোম ইজ মাচ মোর নটোরিয়াস দ্যান দা কোভিড সিনড্রোম ইটসেলফ ফলে ওটা মাথা রাখতে হবে Thank you, uh, Professor Harisulak, for giving some in, uh, new information. Professor uh, Dr. Uh, Dipal. Dr. Dipal. I'm going to ask you a question. Yes. Do you have any question? Another question, actually, uh, actually I'm uh, observing that uh, uh, one question is uh, about type 2 mi in covid patients so i can i may give answer actually um, in my lecture uh, I, I i'm telling that uh, in covid uh, situation especially type 2 uh, mi may be possible because in this here there is no evidence of obstruction and not associated with atherosclerosis because in case of type 1 mi we know that that was related to atherosclerosis and by angiogram uh, in type 1 MI, you can get uh, the obstruction stenosis or thrombus. But in case of type 2 MI, actually, uh, the, uh, this is very important. We can differentiate by clinical scenario uh, because uh, there is maybe different, uh, little different with type 1 and type 2, different, number one. Number two is by investigation, we can differentiate uh, because the diagnosis is, uh, first is, should be established because the diagnosis. Uh, uh, by uh, some blood report, troponin, and uh, by echocardiography, uh, there may be, uh, in case of atherosclerosis or type 1, maybe uh, global, uh, uh, actually, uh, there may be a new regional wall motion abnormality in echocardiography. In case of actually type 2, there may be uh, some imbalance, increased cardiometabolic demand associated with the systemic infection and ongoing hypoxia that already I mentioned previously caused by severe pneumonia or some maybe acute respiratory distress syndrome. Uh, then that, that can be lead to increased demand in, in the actually face of inadequate supply leading to myocardial damage. And for that reason, actually, uh, we do not uh, or we we do no need of this type two because there are no atherosclerotic or obstruction. So, uh, but this should be established. This may be for that reason our first slide. In my first slide, there I can show. A, uh, uh, I could show. I I, I have I've seen a uh, one eco ECG electro cardiograph that it may be. Can we say this is type one or type two by ECG. Actually, it is very difficult. With some clinical scenario, we can differentiate with, but not only ECG finding, it is very uh, difficult to say this is type one or type two. Uh, so it, it should be uh, keep in mind before giving treatment uh, uh, or be give, uh, give before send the patient in the cath lab. So actually, this is very important. Another thing, so in my ECG, again, I mentioned you know, those lot of our junior fellows with me, with us, that if patient complain COVID patient complain of temperature, high degree temperature, that patient should not be transferred in cath lab. This should be, everybody should uh, remember because that, in that case, that patient should be referred to COVID unit first and then uh, the conservative management should be given. Then again, after some stabilization of the patient, uh, then we can uh, send the patient for, for diagnosis. Uh, we can go do the angiogram, but it is very important also temperature in case of high grade temperature, the patient should be transferred uh, actually in cath lab. So my question is actually treatment is different in type one, type two, because pathology is different. So uh, it should keep in mind the diagnosis is very different, uh, dif difficult, and sometimes not straightforward. So uh, it, uh, we, but we can differentiate our knowledge, our patient's clinical scenario with some investigation, and we can uh, actually fix the diagnosis uh, confirmed diagnosis. And I, I, I hope the yes. question is uh, cleared now uh, my, from my answer. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Jaman. And now going to the next question, uh, I am tempted to uh, express a very excellent comment about our presentation by Dr. Musta Cyril Hawk. Uh, he wrote to Professor Mustafa Jaman, sir, we appreciate 
you for such excellent quality of presentation learned many regarding the anticoagulant therapy in covid 19 patients also enjoying presentation of professor choudhury mishkat sir thanks honorable bc sir for joining this cardiology webinar thanks our chairman sir hasan sir arranging such an wonderful webinar now the next question is from professor jahanara arju she asked how can we treat type 2 diabetes mellitus in covid patients who can answer please hello please hello ha uh, professor jawan please oh amake ektu amake question korchen ami ektu jahid sir ke chaachhilam sir na ekhane kauke bolen na uni jahid sir আপনাকে সরাসরি বলতে জাহিদ স্যার ছিল তো ওনার বক্তব্য আমরা শুনি না একটু আপনি যদি পারেন জাহিদ স্যারকে একটু বক্তব্য দেন জাহিদ স্যারকে আমি বলেছি কানেক্ট করতে জাহিদ স্যারকে পাচ্ছে না क्वेश्चन একটু আবার বলবেন একটু क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन হচ্ছে फ्रॉम प्रोफेसर জাহানার আরজু হাউ ক্যান উই ট্রিট টাইপ 2 ডায়াবেটিস মেলাইটাস ইন কোভিড پیشنটস টাইপ 2 মেলাইটাস ডায়াগনোসিস type 2 diabetes mellitus in covid patients how to treat okay thank you thank you actually uh, you know that uh, lot of study actually revealed that though some patients are previously diagnosed as diabetes mellitus that they may be infected by the covid sars cov 2 another uh, region the the patient was not diagnosed was covid uh, uh, diabetes the patient may reveal some increased blood sugar level and diagnosed newly diagnosed uh, by diabetes with after the coronavirus infection so uh, but the ultimate actually things uh, uh, you should observe the with clinical scenario this is new diagnosed patient or the previous diagnosed patient if new diagnosed patient some that may be possible some increase raised sugar level due to some stress uh, with other factors but that should not be we not we, we could we could we, we can't say the patient is diabetic until some days are passed because the initial period then we can after that again we can do the uh, the fasting blood sugar after two hours after 75 uh, two hours breakfast with after 75 gram oral glucose and hb1c if we can diagnose the patient is diabetes that should be one line treatment if we according to diabetic and another scenario is the patient was previously diagnosed and patient was getting medicine medical management suppose the patient was getting uh, oral hypoglycemic agent but patient when patient is admitted in the hospital with critical con- with some critical scenario and uh, moderate to severe then we must trans- uh, actually give the insulin instead of oral hypoglycemic agent and that should be uh, actually ideal so when patient is again go, going again uh, home according to his uh, profile of the blood sugar level then we can uh, give the choice of that may be oral or insulin but when patient is actually in hospital setting or csu setting or covid hospital setting uh, according to the uh, uh, status of the blood sugar level usually we do we give insulin during hospital period so actually uh, the everything of the treatment plan uh, will be according to uh, profile of the patient's blood sugar level and according to treatment there may be guideline in the in the american diabetic association and uh, in bangladesh guide, guideline also uh, in the, actually discussed in this regard so uh, the main summary is that when patient is in hospital we usually give insulin but in case of when patient is not admitted to hospital and but ultimately anyhow the patient's blood sugar level should be controlled that may be oral or insulin but in case of uh, moderate to severe cases insulin should be uh, given because of it should be uh, it work better than oral form can i go to the next question please yes the next question is from dr shomir pudel from nams his question is can we advise cag to patients with erectile dysfunction so probably it goes to the uh, professor mishkat sir no the answer is no to qualify for a patient 
for undergoing coronary angiogram should be same as that of normal population. These are the group of, actually when a patient do have NYHA class three symptom, then he is a candidate for coronary angiogram other than acute coronary syndromes, generally speaking. So it is true for all sort of population. The patient with erectile dysfunction, if he's in, young enough, then he should go for cardiac uh, risk stratification. If his stratification reveals that he is at high risk, then he should go for cell modification and risk factor modification. If he is not symptomatic, there should there is no question of doing any coronary angiogram. No pain thank you. angiogram. And thank you, sir. Is up to not up NYH3, no need for angiogram. Thank you, sir. Our next question is from Dr. Birat Timalsena. His question is. How good is brachial flow meter mediate dilatation to detect any function? I think this question is also yes. This, to this question is also Mishkar, to me. Uh, we can we can actually do it back brachial brachial mediated uh, flow directed brachial artery by uh, ultrasound or the all or the probe that we have with the echo, echo machine. Uh, this is good, but if you if you look at the in a recommendation about the non-invasive procedure to make a diagnosis of coronary artery disease, then only this particular test will be able to identify the amount of uh, endothelial dysfunction. But the amount of endothelial dysfunction does not always translate into the clinical manifestation of a, of, of a disease. Uh, so the value of uh, flow-mediated bacterial uh, vasodilatation is uh, as good as that of other non-invasive non procedure. Nothing, uh, nothing is specific and nothing is superior other than the other, other test. But the coronary calcium scoring is one of the tests that has been advocated by many, many group of people that this, this should be the starting point. If you have uh, high coronary calcium, very high, then you can have some stress test. If the stress test is not in your favor, then probably you can go for coronary angiogram. But the main essence is to treat the, the patient, uh, patient's risk factors and patient's lifestyle modification, and, we, and if possible, to give him some statin. And also, there will be an important concern about giving testosterone, because we know if, the, if we want to have this patient a normal erectile function, and if, if, I, if we want to put this patient into the normal life, then we have to really think about giving testosterone and PDE. Uh, given, but uh, we have to be a little concerned about the testosterone. Uh, Professor Dipal, uh, I am actually, I am there. Jodi kono senior atheke thake. Ab duita question asse. I am to. I am in shop shop panel is there kaise open asse? Jeko answer korte chale, unmute kore, unna answer di. Ben. Acha acha. Dear panelist. Respected panelist, Apna Judi Gu Kothabul Chan, unmute Kuri Kothabul the Parvin. Which are another Kishomo at the end, Ekajan Kore, the other at Set. Tato Ase Ami question Gulage, Sheshkuri Filtija, Amarate, are Matu Duta question as Ami Duta question Kurem, Panish Derka Sefiro Jabo. Ebar question now the question is from Dr. Arjun Buddha Toki. His question is, how long was the repeat COVID positive? How many months later? Yes, sir. Uh, already. It I... goes to Professor Jaman, and uh, if any panelist can also answer. But uh, I think uh, Professor Jaman is the target. Yes, uh, already I, I have mentioned in previously that uh, in, uh, so far I, I remember that in July, uh, mid-July, the CDC actually uh, actually revealed a start uh, one one news and uh, their guideline they told that up to 12 weeks this may be positive or not positive because it already the actual reason already i have explained explained before the question so actually up to 12 weeks this may be positive due to non replicant virus so uh, but uh, everything every day we are learning new things we are getting new information. So time will say the exact uh, answer. But up to date, this is non replicant venous. The RT-PCR may be positive up to 12 weeks up from the initial date. So, uh, and another uh, actual study, and they revealed that the 
uh, actually symptom may be come again uh, after the disappear. So symptom may be actually off and on. And the pause, there are some patients, uh, I have some patients, uh, they did actually three to four times and did two, three to four times uh, their report was positive. And uh, somebody told me that after uh, at six times, they actually revealed uh, a negative. And because uh, though I have, I have told them that they, this virus will, will not actually harm to you, harmful to your body, and nobody will uh, actually infect it from you, though you are positive. But they, are, they told me because uh, they're not satisfied up to the dead ones negative report, because otherwise their office will not give the uh, actually good behavior, colleague will not give, giving good behavior with him because he's still not positive. But CDC in the mid July, they, give, uh, they has given their uh, actually uh, paper that, that may, uh, again I mentioned that up to 12 weeks, this may be possible or if positive. Thank you, Professor Jaman. Uh, our next question is from Dr. Birat. He questioned how to optimize beta blocker among young, young male taking beta blocker for compelling indication, complaining of erectile dysfunction after starting medications. Probably this goes to Professor Mushkat, sir. Yes, Birat, this is a very tricky question. Uh, actually, then we have to make a trade off trade-off between erectile dysfunction and the coronary health. And um, as far nebilolol is concerned, uh, we can try with nebilolol, but the, the, but the study which has uh, shown the benefits of beta blocker in patients with coronary artery disease are centers around carbidolol and other drugs. So mm -hmm. it, uh, it is not that, uh, that clear with, whether nebilolol will give equal, uh, equal protective uh, role to a patient with coronary artery disease when they have uh, erectile dysfunction. Uh, and in probably in that case, you can select other vasodilatory beta blocker like carbidolol, uh, if you really have to give any beta blocker, but you just cannot withdraw it uh, if the patient has got the compelling evidence of have, uh, having that drug uh, up front for this patient. Thank you, sir. We have uh, two more questions. I'll uh, complete within five minutes, I think. The next question is from Dr. Nizamul Hossein. The question is, during discharge of COVID patients, we used to advise river observant 10 milligram daily for four weeks to every patient. Is it ideal or justified? Probably this goes to Professor Jaman. Professor Jaman, please. Professor Jaman. He left the session. <laughs> oh, Azum, sir. Assalamualaikum, sir. Arkit, sir, dekhti hai nahi abhi. Naalaikum, salam. Jaman left kulle, tahle. Ryan, can you please uh, make Professor MG Ajum as a panel, please. Yes, sir. MG uh, Ajum. Professor MG Thank Ajum you. is in the panel, sir. Ajum can give the answer. Thank you. Yes, yes, sir. Ajum can give the answer, sir. And I, anyway, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Oral anticoagulation recommendation College of Cardiology recommendation. You get the hospital patient when diagnosed, confirmed, and during discharge who get the anticoagulant in hospital settings. In order to prevent further event to reduce the mortality and morbidity, you can recommend two weeks to 45 days. It is in case of river oxygen, actually, it is recommended by uh, Abigatron, but in now, a recent trial shows Rebaraxaven, you can recommend where there is no suitable, suitable alternatives is not is available. You can give. According to the clinician judgment, if you think patient will be benefited, then you can recommend oral anticoagulant. So, so in case of routine, you don't recommend. It is special, uh, just patient concern. 
and I think any more things can be added by Professor Mustafa Jawan because he is the keynote speaker. I think he will be add much more things, make the suitable for our recommendations. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor Rajam. Thank you, Professor Rajam. Now, uh, probably we have uh, come to the end of the question session, though there are many questions. Probably we will not be able to answer all the questions. But here I am the last question uh, from Dr. Shoilen Bishash. Is there any way to detect endothelial dysfunction? Number one. Number two, what, what is the primary and secondary prevention of endothelial dysfunction? Professor Mishkat, sir, please. Okay. Yes, uh, as has been discussed, the flow mediated brachial artery dilatation is the indirect measure of endothelial function. And what endothelial dysfunction causes is the onset of the uh, uh, endothelial uh, spasm. There is recruitment of the inflammatory cells, and there is stiffness in the vascular wall. All this, all these things, sets a wall for atherothrombotic process. So the uh, the preventive measure is same as for prevention of coronary artery disease. That is the risk factor modification lifestyle modification, maybe uh, statin and other drugs that has got beneficial effect on inflammatory process and, uh, and the, uh, another lipidin process and maybe probably some aspirin. Hello. Deepak. So, so, sir, Professor Jaman is back. Sir, uh, can we get some more other questions? There are so many questions. No, no, no. No, no, no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to talk to you, sir. I'm very sorry to all the questioners who put so many questions. There are 10 questions in my queue. So I'm sorry, uh, due to shortage of time, I'm, uh, I'm going to the panelists directly. Uh, and BC sir is so enthusiastic that he is still with us. So I am asking the uh, BC sir to say something about... No, no, sir, 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 Madam, uh, madam, uh, madam, madam, I'm just starting from abroad. There are two our uh, there are two foreign panelists. One is Dr. Ravi Malla, he was my friend, and Dr. Ari Arun Maski, who was my senior there. So can I uh, ask to give floor to Dr. Ravi Malla, please? Yeah, good afternoon, good evening. All my respected seniors, it's so good to see all my seniors. Professor Sufia uh, was our teacher when I was doing my MD in NICVD. It, and thanks to both, both the speakers, my seniors, it was a privilege to hear such presentation. Thank you all. And hope to see you all again and again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ravi Malla, to address our session from Nepal, who is a very friendly country to us. And uh, there are so many colleagues from here. Now I will request Professor Orun Maski, very popular to us, uh, to give floor to him, please. Dr. Orin Maski, please. Uh, if not, then uh, we can give uh, other. Is Dr. Maski, please. Dr. Orin Maski, please. Okay, if uh, if uh, if not getting him, uh, I can ask Professor M. G. Ajum from NICBD to speak a very few words for us. Because he is a guest here. Professor M. D. Azam, are you here? Yeah, I have seen you. Please. 
please say uh, say some words in brief professor ajam please yes. unmute please unmute please professor yes. ajam now your yeah, your question sorry your query what is the query no, no query. query just comment just comment some wishes for us Uh, thank you very God, much. Actually, inter internet, internet connection is very poor. That's why I am in Tartin okay, okay, we'll Transport Building, and Link Three is interrupted due to rapid development of the municipal corporation. Our mayor is doing cleaning the <laughs> all wires. That's why I am using my mobile. That's why I am not well connected to you. That's why it is very. I am also using mobile because my uh, internet uh, was very disturbing. Now so, but I am really privileged to be here with you, a uh, legend guys like you, and it is my honor and privilege. Really, our vice chancellor sir already present with us, and all of our leaders, uh, key opinion leaders in cardiology, like Professor Shahzad Banerjee, Meshkar sir, Fuzdur Rahman sir, Mustafa Jawan, Professor you. Mustafa Jawan by and um, our Hari Sulhak. So it's my really privilege to be. Say something, and we should encourage our daily or CME activity. Like in this, in this pandemic situation, we thought uh, we learned how to arrange our virtual meeting. Actually, in daily practice, in daily life, we are really very busy. So now we can use it virtual platform. Sometimes we need some academic activities, especially in holidays like weekdays or weekly holidays. We can arrange one or sixty minutes or ninety minutes medical webinar, so that we can disseminate our knowledge to our fellows and colleagues, and we give our future direction to our next generations. So I think it is the great initiative from Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Medical University, Bangladesh Cardiac Research Foundation, take the initiative, and every organization should come forward, and we will get much more information from our for our next generation people. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you, thank Rajo. you, Professor Jaman, for your kind words. Now I am requesting Professor Abdul Wazu Choudhury, who is the head of the Department of Cardiology, Dhaka Medical College, to Professor Abdul Wazu Choudhury. Ryan, is Abdul Wazu Choudhury here? Sir, is not present with us at the moment. Oh yeah, Sophia, Sophia, Madam, what is it now? Now I can can I request Professor Bodhuj Jaman from National Heart Foundation? Is he here? Yeah, I am here. Thank you very Sir, much. Please. Good evening please, and assalamu alaikum to all you, all of you. Uh, Sophia, Madam, what is the matter? Madam, assalamu alaikum. Among uh, Shabai ke jara aache kena everybody. Uh, actually, it was a very interesting discussion. Uh, I have an honest confession, actually. Uh, actually, I joined this con uh, this. Uh, uh, Madam, uh, sir, sir, Madam, uh, because Madam, of some Samarikul. problem, I I mean, to video the judge now. I am in a very uh, awkward situation actually. So uh, uh, first of all, I had a, a confession. I joined this webinar when I only to find a uh, very attractive. Uh, uh, Headline: ED physical ED. Point. <laughs> It uh, and very important marker of now COVID nineteen patient. Patient already has. Uh, so it was excellent. <laughs> I enjoyed your lecture. I learned a lot from you and. All the panelists, uh, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to talk to you, Vars. Thank you, thank you, Professor Bodhu Jaman Sir, for your kind words. Now, I am requesting our grand teacher, Professor Supya Rahman, Madam, please. Amade Juni Gusu Dua Koren, Madam.
Dua tane dua tane dua tane dua tane ye mustafa zam present very nicely both of them were very very good and uh, in presence of their vc which is konar uh, kantagoria <laughs> nice to see you as well um, i don't have any question. i i just want wanted to say that because a long time ago when i was uh, younger than you at that time in uk when we had patient with my vadel or after the patient at the procedure department which is the rehabilitation department cardiac rehabilitation department and, uh, and that, that was more important as it was uh, for ccu or uh, ot or post uh, yeah icu or icu and they also had the department of having this um, this ed problem whether before or it is uh, if it is before uh, detected in the outpatient we used to refer them to that department and they used to take care of it and it it really needs time and uh, motivation and then because you will also what, what as a physician will do is the change of medicine and try to see the side effects of it and try to um, alter it but we will not, never ever give that much of time what that person is need for ed so that so in you know in that in that uh, time even uh, i'm talking about 40 years years ago they used assessment and then the medical assessment from it. and then uh, they used to rehab and may uh, before uh, as i said before having any procedure as our patient and after procedure as a patient this department is very very much needed so in to have a department like that so that the patient will benefit no doubt about it it is surgically surgically or interventionally treated more than that you will detect them i also face i also face that patient can be in bangladesh the what you call them uh, those who motivate you those who spec along with your medicine and everything this is is a very very vital so i think i think you know uh, you uh, in your cardiology department if you can start one and as all all of you in cardiology department are doing wonderful job and um, the one you will do in uh, university bangabandhu medical university that will probably the one will leading in the whole country and you can you have manpower you have got intention you have got a dedication i'm sure you can do it and that will be the best thing for for our cardiology department to start and it is believe me it is needed it badly needed this uh, you and me for one or two minutes or half an hour is no, no good for the patient this is my advice and the other thing is that covid is see, um, is uh, we are all learning we are all learning nobody can give a line and say this is the thing can happen and you do it after two weeks you do it after three weeks you do it after five weeks nobody can say it. though four or five months has gone is changing the guidelines are changing they are, so we have to wait whatever we have we have to be up to date with it mainly you have to those are serious and the mild moderate and severe so moderate to severe category is different and mild category is different and i'm sure it equally and um, seeing all of you in good health is a good thing meshkat is very nice talk and i said uh, timely i don't say it's a late but still timely but uh, i think with your um, leadership you can uh, get a department of having uh, uh, this uh, uh, what you call psychotherapy or what you, uh, the other word i just can't remember Um, uh, rehabilitation is one psychological treatment is one and, uh, psychotherapy madam psychotherapy is there but uh, you say psychotherapy it looks uh, bad is uh, there is another term i just uh, can't remember. it's old age i can't remember that um, you know when people goes to talk with the psychologist 
have a conversation with them in time and again and then they get their their confidence back that ইউনিভার্সিটিতে and they have um, given us uh, some guideline that what we can do next those who people has uh, died you know in uh, america and in uh, in uh, what you call italy and in uh, germany after the research this has come up that this problem is there that's when so many people has died so i'm sure uh, the present uh, guideline you'll carry on and then you always you'll update it i am also updating you see i'm i'm I uh, think before the Maghrib, I'm sitting here. I was missing your thing for five, six minutes, but I came back again. But this is a wonderful session. Keep it up and keep doing it in any, under the any umbrella. Doesn't matter which umbrella you're under. Under the any umbrella, you just do keep it doing. Thank, Thank you, you madam, very much. for your inspiring word. But uh, something I can add, uh, uh, Professor Hari Sulhok is... with us as panelist he will uh, probably tell you something uh, that there are uh, some provisions of rehabilitation here uh, please uh, keep in touch with us probably he will answer your question madam now may i request professor m a mukit sir to it as a panel আপনি শুনতে পাচ্ছেন আমি প্রথমে কমপ্লিট করি আমাদের দুজন সারদেরকে একজন আমার ডাইরেক্ট টিচার তাদেরকে অসংখ্য ধন্যবাদ জানিয়ে আমার কমেন্ট শেষ please professor hari sulhok thank you very much uh, dr deepal kumar vikari ajke onushthane dutu lecture e bishon sundor hoyeche ebong monomugdho korchilo ebong janar moto onek kichu chilo ebong amar khub bhal legeche je ekhane amader vichichar borabori uni prothom theke shuru porjonto sob web ner e thaken ebong ajke ami bishon bhabe anondito ebong anondito ei karone amar mentor e jaranar e chichit korechi cardiology er kaj hate nate shikhechi bhomok kheche adur peyechi professor sufia raman এখানে হাজির হয়েছেন এবং এমন একটা বিষয়ে ম্যাডাম কথা বলেছেন যেটা নিয়ে সদর স্যার অনেকদিন থেকে ভাবছিলেন সদর স্যার সিনিয়র মোস্ট কার্ডিওলজিস্ট আমাদের ডিপার্টমেন্টের তো স্যার চেয়ারম্যান থাকি তখন শুরু করে দিয়েছিলেন এই জিনিসটা হার্ট ফেলুয়ার রিহেবিলিটেশন অ্যান্ড প্রিভেন্টিভ কার্ডিওলজি এই চিন্তা থেকে এবং ম্যাডাম শুনলে চেষ্টা কিন্তু এখনো চলছে ভিসি স্যার এখানে হাজির আছেন স্যারকে কদিন আগেও বলেছিলাম যে কোভিড হসপিটাল থেকে পরবর্তী সময় হাই ফ্লো অক্সিজেন আমাদের হার্ট ফেলুর ক্লিনিকের জন্য দেওয়ার ব্যাপার এবং আমরা সাইকিয়াট্রিক এবং সাইকোলজিক্যাল সাইকোথেরাপি কাউন্সিলিং এই জিনিসটা অলরেডি করছি আমাদের দুজন ছাত্র ওই ব্যাপারে অলরেডি থিজিট করছে এ ব্যাপারে আমাদের সাইকিয়াট্রিক ডিপার্টমেন্ট আমাদের সঙ্গে কাজ করছে তো সাইকিয়াট্রিক ডিপার্টমেন্টের সঙ্গে আমাদের এই জিনিসটা কাজ করছে যেমন আমরা অনকোলজির সঙ্গে কাজ করছি কার্ডিও অনকোলজি কার্ডিও অবস্টেটিক্স হ্যাঁ আমরা এগুচ্ছি ধীরে ধীরে 
তো ম্যাডাম একটা ভালো কথা এখানে বলেছেন যে আমাদের প্রচুর ম্যান পাওয়ার আছে বঙ্গবন্ধু শুরু করে লিডারশিপ দিতে পারে আমরা সেই প্রচেষ্টায় আগাচ্ছি আমরা ভিসি স্যারের কাছে হয়তো বা কদিন পরে গিয়ে বলবো আমাদের দশটা ব্যাট দেন আরো দুইটা রুম দেন তারপর আজকে ভালো হলো ম্যাডাম যখন বললেন এবং যখন বললেন ভিসি স্যারের যে সদস্য স্যার প্রথম বছর আরো বছর থেকে চেষ্টা করছে এটাকে করার জন্য হয়তো বা সদস্য স্যারের হাত দিয়ে আমরা পরিপূর্ণ ভাবে একটা হাত ফেলের একটা ডিপার্টমেন্ট স্টার্ট করতে পারবো বঙ্গবন্ধু উনিশশো তেয়াত্তর সালের স্বপ্ন দেখেছিলেন কার্ডিও ফিজিওলজি ল্যাবরেটরি কলেজে হবে অনেক মেডিকেল কলেজে এখন পর্যন্ত সিসিও হয়নি ফলে আমরা আশা করতে পারি সিসিও তারপর হার্ট ফেলিওর এবং এই যে আজকে যে কথা হলো যে এন্ডোসিলার ডিসফাংশন এইগুলিকে নিরূপণ করার জন্য কার্ডিও ফিজিওলজি ল্যাবের দরকার অনস্বীকার্য কারণ আমি যদি কার্ডিও ফিজিওলজি না বুঝি ফলে কার্ডিও কার্ডিয়াক প্যাথোলজি বোঝা খুব দুষ্কর হয়ে যাবে ফলে এগুলো আমরা ভাবতে পারি এখন জেনেটিক স্টাডি জিন স্টাডি জেনুম স্টাডি তারপর আমরা টেলোমিয়ার শর্ট টেলোমিয়ার ডিজিজ এগুলি ঢাকাতে ডায়াগনোস করতে পারছি এটা খুব আনন্দের ব্যাপার তাহলে কার্ডো মায়াপেচি আইসিএম গুলিকে আমরা এখানে নিয়ে চলে আসতে পারি তো ধন্যবাদ খুবই সুন্দর প্রচন্ড ভালো দুটো আলোচনা হয়েছে ধন্যবাদ আপনাদের সবাইকে ধন্যবাদ হারিসুল হক স্যারকে কবির জন্য আমি কবির প্রশস্তি বচনটা বাংলাতেই বলি অত্যন্ত সুন্দরভাবে উনি যেভাবে ছন্দবদ্ধ কবিতা লেখেন ম্যাডামের উত্তরটাও ঠিক কাব্যিক ভাবেই দিলেন এবং আমরা খুব আশান্বিত হলাম হাজিসুল হক স্যারের নেতৃত্বে আমরা এই জিনিসটা এগিয়ে নিয়ে যেতে পারবো এবার আমি অনুরোধ করব আমাদের ডিপার্টমেন্টের আর একজন প্রফেসর প্রফেসর মোহাম্মদ শফিউদ্দিন স্যারকে কিছু বলবার জন্য আমাদের প্যানেলিস্ট প্রফেসর শফিউদ্দিন স্যার রায়ান আসেন ফজলুর রহমান স্যার জি স্যার আনমিউট করেন স্যার ফজলুর রহমান স্যার ক্যান ইউ হিয়ার আস can you please unmute your fazlur rahman sir can you hear us sir is muted unmute korte parben ryan so, sir uh, no sir i can ask him to i'm asking him to but no response sir tahole tahole acha the tahole ebar amra last part of the session e chole eschi এখন আমাদের এই সেশনের চেয়ারম্যান প্রফেসর সজল স্যার যেভাবে বলবেন আমরা ভিসি স্যারের কাছ থেকে কিছু আমাদের ইন্সপিরেশন মূলক আলোচনা শুনতে চাই সেটা বললে মনে হয় ভালো হয় সজল স্যারের বলার আগে আমি রিকোয়েস্ট করছি ভিসি স্যারকে আমাদেরকে কিছু উদ্দীপনামূলক কিছু বক্তব্য যদি উপস্থাপন করেন স্যার ভিসি স্যার sir please unmute sir shunte pachhen this sir was very kind to keep in touch with us from the very beginning so asha kori sir amader ke ajke amader ei onushthan somporke kichu feedback diben ebong amader jonno kichu uddeponamulok alochona korben this sir please sir please unmute স্যারকে ফোন দিবেন নাকি জামান প্রফেসর জামান আপনাকে বলা শুনতে পাচ্ছেন আমি 
आनंदित सुफिया मैडम के प्रफेसर सुफिया मैडम के देखे आनंदित मैडम कमेंट गुलाब मनोज सहकार अभिनंदन Uh, both of the their presentations amar majhe 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 phone e hocchilo je professor meshkat ei topics er upor keno lecture dite gelo tar pure cardiology er upore na diye to pore bujhte parlam tar lecture er por je etar sathe eta je somporko shei jonno hoyto ba she she etar upore disse ebong tar presentation ta ektu betikrom dhore me amar kache mone holo मन एक कष्ट पेलमिस्ट कम तुम्हारे डिपार्टमेंटर कार्डियोलॉजिकली <laughs> 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 and i i thank meshkat for it and i was wondering what you say he has been highlighting everything very nicely but now your help is needed for them to have the counseling and department and all this please do that thank you i am also pleased to see you after a long time <laughs> thank you madam thank you madam, madam. Thank, thank you thank you thank you madam thank you thank you for the shop one day for the student will madam i kintu apnar sathe shorashori kaaj sikhche apnar kaaj दूर शासन कर Okay, nice to see you. Uh, nice. 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 Nice
তারপরে শেষ করে মনে হয় যিনি একদম প্রথম থেকে এই পর্যন্ত আমাদের সঙ্গে আছেন যদিও স্যার নন কার্ডিয়াক বলেছেন কিন্তু আমি দেখলাম যে স্যার এই ধরনের একাডেমিক অনুষ্ঠানে সব অনুষ্ঠানে স্যার প্রথম থেকেই থাকেন এবং শেষ পর্যন্ত থাকেন ভেরি রিসেন্টলি আমি গাইনির একটা ওয়েবিনিয়ারে স্যারকে দেখলাম এবং সবচেয়ে আমার অদ্ভুত লেগেছে আশ্চর্য লেগেছে যে স্যার একটা একটাই কোয়েশ্চেন করেছেন এবং দেখলাম যে স্যারের কোয়েশ্চেনটা এমনই ট্রিকি এবং একাডেমিক কোয়েশ্চেন আনফর্চুনেটলি কেউ জবাব দিতে পারলো না পরে স্যারই জবাব দিয়ে দিলেন সেটা আমি সারা জীবন মনে রাখবো তো স্যারকে আমার একদম রিয়ালি অন্তর থেকে ধন্যবাদ যে স্যার আমাদের আজকের এই ওয়েবিনিয়ারে প্রথম থেকে শেষ পর্যন্ত থাকলেন আমাদেরকে উৎসাহ যোগালেন এবং আমরা স্যারের কাছে কৃতজ্ঞ থাকবো চিরদিন তারপরে উপস্থিত আছেন আমাদের শিক্ষাগুরু প্রফেসর সুফিয়া ম্যাডাম সুফিয়া ম্যাডাম আসলে আমাদেরকে হাতে ধরে শিখিয়েছেন বকা ঝকা যতটুকু করেছেন তার চাইতেও বেশি দোয়া করেছেন বেশি পড়াশোনা করিয়েছেন যার জন্য আসতে পেরেছি ম্যাডাম আপনি আমাদেরকে দোয়া করবেন আর আমরা আপনার জন্য দোয়া করি আপনি যেন শরীরের দীর্ঘদিন আরো ভালো থাকেন সুস্থ থাকেন এই কামনা থাকবে দোয়া থাকবে আর আজকে আমাদের আরেকজন স্পেশাল গেস্ট প্রফেসর জাহিদ হোসেন আমাদের পেডিয়েটিক কার্ডিওলজির চিফ এবং প্রফেসি আমাদের ইউনিভার্সিটির তাকেও আমাদের এই ওয়েবিনিয়ার এবং কার্ডিওলজি ডিপার্টমেন্টের তরফ থেকে আন্তরিক ধন্যবাদ আর এখানে দুজন স্পিকার দুজন স্পিকার আসলে আমি কি বলবো আমি তো আসলে গত পাঁচ ছয় মাস শুধু কোভিডের উপর কথা শুনে আসছি প্রতিদিন তিনটা চারটা ওয়েবিনিয়ার তো এই কোভিড সংক্রান্ত কথা শুনতে শুনতে আসলে আমি দেখলাম যে বাংলাদেশের মোটামুটি সবাই মাস্টার হয়ে গেছে এবং আজকে জামানের প্রেজেন্টেশন এক্সেপশনাল হয়েছে জামানকে আমার আন্তরিক ধন্যবাদ তবে মেশকাতের ব্যাপারে বলবো যে মেশকাত একটা ব্রেক থ্রু করেছে এবং মেশকাতের এই ইউনিক প্রেজেন্টেশন আনপ্যারালাল প্রেজেন্টেশন এবং এই কোভিডের মধ্যে এই বোরিং হয়ে যাওয়ার থেকে আমাদেরকে একটু ডেভিয়েট করে করতে পেরেছে এবং একটা ইম্পর্টেন্ট ইস্যুতে যে বক্তব্য রেখেছে সেটা আমাদের সবার জন্য খুবই এফেক্টিভ এবং আমাদের সবার কাজে লাগবে কারণ আমাদের প্রতিদিনের কাজকর্মে দেখা যায় যে এই ধরনের সমস্যা আমরা রোজ রোজ আমরা এনকাউন্টার করি এবং মানুষের একটি হ্যাপি লাইফ সেক্সুয়াল লাইফটা তো একটা ইম্পর্টেন্ট ইস্যু এবং আমরা কি করি আমরা অধিকাংশ সময় ইউরোলজির ডাক্তারের কাছে পাঠিয়ে দিই যে ইরেকটাইল ডিসফাংশন তো ইউরোলজির ডাক্তারের কাছে যাও কিন্তু আমার যে একটা বড় ভূমিকা আছে বা আমাদের সবার যে একটা এখানে কাউন্সিলিং সহ ড্রাগ অ্যাডজাস্টমেন্ট প্লাস অন্য অন্য ব্যাপার কনসিডার করা এবং তাকে তার একটা স্বাভাবিক জীবনে ফেরত নিয়ে যাওয়া এইটার যে একটা বড় ভূমিকা আছে কার্ডিওলজিস্টের এইটা আজকে চোখে আঙুল দিয়ে মেশকা দেখিয়ে দিয়েছে এবং মেশকা এত নাইসলি ডেলিভারেট করেছে উইথ ডকুমেন্টেশন অ্যান্ড এভরিথিং আমি মেশকাতকে আবারও মানে অ্যাপ্রিসিয়েট করব কংগ্রাচুলেট করব এবং মেশকাতকে বলবো যে মেশকাতে এরকম ব্যতিক্রমধর্মী প্রেজেন্টেশন আমাদের সবার জন্য অনেক কাজে আসবে এবং কাজে আসছেও এই পর্যন্ত তো মেশকাতকে অনেক অনেক ধন্যবাদ জামানকে অনেক ধন্যবাদ প্যানেলিস্ট যারা ছিলেন তাদেরকে আন্তরিক ধন্যবাদ আর মডারেটর ডিপলকে নাইসলি মডারেট করার জন্য অভিনন্দন 
আজকে যারা এখানে উপস্থিত ছিলেন অন্যান্য অডিয়েন্স তাদেরকে আমাদের তরফ থেকে কার্ডিওলজি ডিপার্টমেন্ট এবং আমার নিজের তরফ থেকে বা আমাদের অর্গানাইজেশনের তরফ থেকে ধন্যবাদ এবং অভিনন্দন সবাই ভালো থাকবেন সুস্থ থাকবেন নিরাপদে থাকবেন আর আমাদের যারা মুরুব্বী বিসি স্যার সহ সবাইকে বলবো যে আমাদের জন্য দোয়া করবেন যেন আমরা ঠিকঠাক মতন কাজকর্ম করে এগিয়ে যেতে পারি এবং আমাদের উপর অর্পিত দায়িত্ব আমরা ঠিক মতো পালন করতে পারি সবাইকে আবারও ধন্যবাদ সবার মঙ্গল কামনা করি সবার সুস্বাস্থ্য কামনা করি আজকে আমার মনে হয় এখানেই শেষ করি সবাইকে আবারও ধন্যবাদ ম্যাডাম দোয়া করবেন ম্যাডামকে সালাম ম্যাডাম ক্লাস নিতেন যখন ইন্টারভেনশন করবেন কমপ্লিকেশন হবেন না আপনার কোন কমপ্লিকেশন হয় না তার মানে আপনি আমি না পারলে কেন জানি আমাকে বকতে না এটাই আমি বললাম আর কি ম্যাডাম কেন যে আমাকে বকতে না বুঝতে না আমি কিন্তু আপনার স্টাইলে পড়াই ম্যাডাম ছেলে মেয়ে যেরকম সাকসেসফুল হলে মা বাবা যে আনন্দ পায় আজকে আমি দিন প্রতিদিন আমি আমি তো কিন্তু বিসিসারের মতো বিগিনিং থেকে দেখতেছি আমি প্রতিটা মিটিং এ বিগিনিং সবার আগে লগ ইন করে বসে থাকি দেখার খুবই ভালো লাগে দেখতে আর মনে মনে বলি এই ছেলেটাকে কত না জানি বকছি আজকে কত সাকসেসফুল আমাকে আমাকে তো বকতেছে মনে মনে বাট আই রিয়েলি প্রে ফর ইউ অল আমি রিয়েলি প্রাউড অফ ইউ টু সি লাইক দিস আমার বকা জায়গা আমি সব ভুলে গেছি এখন তো আমি বকতেই পারি না জানেন অনেক ঠান্ডা হয়ে গেছি না ম্যাডাম আপনি তো আদরের বকা দিতেন এগুলো তো আমরা বললাম ইউ আর মাই ফেভারিট আজকে প্রত্যেকই নট এ সিঙ্গেল ওয়ান एवरीवन इज মাই ফেভারিট थैंक यू सो मच ম্যাডাম আমার ইন্টারভেনশন তো ম্যাডাম আমার ইন্টারভেনশন আপনি করি আপনারা সবাই থেকে আমাদের অনেক ইনস্পায়ার করেছেন অনেক ইনস্পায়ার করেছেন थैंक यू ম্যাডাম স্যার थैंक यू স্যার ভালো কাজ করেন তারপরে কোভিড গেলে আসবো এনে দেখতে আপনাদের জি জি ম্যাডাম জি ম্যাডাম রিয়েল লাইফ দেখতে বন্ধ করে দিয়েছেন তো আপনাদের ওখান থেকে কেউ কিছু বললে দুই মিনিট বলতে পারেন sir uh, first of all i am here like kichu je hotam thank you so much sir and um, everyone for letting us be as a scientific partner in this webinar and we hope you'll bless us with the opportunity to be in more scientific webinars as a scientific partner thank you sir for amar amar mone hoy jaman sir er taraf theke apnar ekta thanks pauna ache karon ami ektu jaman sir er kotha bole nei এই অনুষ্ঠানটা হয়েছে কিন্তু পুরাটাই জামান স্যারের কৃতিত্ব উনি ওনার রিলেন্টলেস যে অ্যাক্টিভিটি আমি ওনাকে বলি একটা মাল্টিপল জিনিয়াস উনি একসঙ্গে যে মাইকেল মধুসূদনের মতো একসঙ্গে ছটা কাব্য লিখতেন নাকি উনি আমি জামান স্যারকে বলি এরকম যে উনি এক হাত দিয়ে যে কয়টা কাজ করেন এবং এই কাজটা যে উনি কিভাবে উঠিয়ে আনলেন আমি তো আগে থেকে উনাকে চিনি অনেকে জানে না আমি বললাম আর কি সবাইকে 
তো সেই হিসাবে আপনাদের সাথে যোগাযোগ করার সবকিছু জামান স্যার এর কৃতিত্ব তো আমার মনে হয় জামান স্যার নিজে আপনাদেরকে একটু কিছু বলুক আমাদেরকে যেভাবে উৎসাহ দিয়েছেন আগের বার প্রতিবারই দেন স্যার তারপরে আমরা অনুপ্রাণিত হয়েছি আসলে এই কোভিড কালেও স্যার আমাদেরকে যেভাবে সহযোগিতা করছেন এবং অনুপ্রেরণা দিচ্ছেন মাননীয় ভাইস চ্যান্সেলার প্রতি আমি আসলে কৃতজ্ঞ ম্যাডাম যেন আমি জানি তো এটাই হোক ম্যাডাম তারপরেও ম্যাডাম এর সাথে আমার অনেক মধুর সম্পর্ক ম্যাডাম কে আজকে দেখতে পেয়ে খুবই ভালো লেগেছে এবং হাট ফর্মেশন বদুর জামান ছিলেন উনিও আমাদেরকে অনুপ্রাণ দিয়েছেন আজম ডক্টর আজম ছিলেন আমাদেরই বিএস মোর ফেলো থেকে এসে জয়েন করেছে মেশকা স্যার সবসময় আমার আমার সরাসরি শিক্ষক যিনি আজকে আমার যে এত সুন্দর করে স্পিকার হিসেবে যখন আমি বললাম ম্যাডাম স্যারকে যে স্পিকার হতে স্যার হয়েছে এই হয়েছেন শুধু স্যার সবসময় আনপ্যারালাল মানে আমি বলবো যে কোনোদিন না করে নি আমাদের কোনো কাজে সবসময় সাহস দিয়ে সহযোগিতা করছেন এবং তার কারণেই আসলে আপনি যেটা বললেন দীপল দা যে আমি যে কোনো কাজ একসাথে করেন সাহস পাই এবং হারিস ভাই আছেন এখানে এর সাথে আমাদের যারা যারা ফ্যাকাল্টি ছিলেন আমাদের আজকে এখানে সবাইকে আমি আসলে আমাদের ধন্যবাদ এবং ইনসেপ্টাকে সবসময় আমি বলি যে আমাদের এই ধরনের সায়েন্টিফিক পার্টনার হিসেবে তারা সবসময় থেকেছেন পাশে থেকেছেন তাদেরকেও ধন্যবাদ জানাচ্ছি আমি বলবো যে যেখানে আমাদের আমাদের বিভাগের যারা ফ্যাকাল্টি ছিলেন যারা আমাদের পার্টস অনেকে থেকেছেন হয়তো কথা বলেননি কিন্তু তাদেরকে আমি অভিনন্দন জানাচ্ছি বিশেষ করে তো আমরা এটা শুরু করলাম এখানে এই শুরুটা হয়তো আমরা আরো বিভিন্ন ভাবে সারা বাংলাদেশ ব্যাপী বিভিন্ন প্রতিষ্ঠানে আমরা আসলে করব প্রোগ্রামটা এবং দীপল দাকে ধন্যবাদ যে প্রথম অনুষ্ঠানটাতে হয়তো আমরা দুজনে একটু বেশি পরিশ্রম করেছি কিন্তু বলবো যে সহল স্যার খুব প্রশংসা পরিশ্রম করেছেন আমরা এই প্ল্যাটফর্মটাকে আরো সুন্দর ভাবে যাতে সারা বাংলাদেশে নতুন নতুন টপিক দিয়ে আমাদের এই কোভিড কালে হোক আমরা পরবর্তীতে হোক সবসময় আমরা এই চালিয়ে যাব এবং আমরা এই জ্ঞান অর্জনের যে যে আমাদের যে উদ্দেশ্য এবং জ্ঞান বিতরণের আমাদের